Hey guys, Nanman here, and we're doing another episode of Modern Meta Breakdown. I've got Malcolm joining me today. Um, so we missed out last week. We're kind of busy doing real life stuff, um, and I know some people have been asking about this deck. It's been kind of not really on most people's radars for a while. Um, sort of fallen off, uh, but still a powerful deck. Like it does really well. When there's a lot of mid rangey decks like Jund or Abzan and stuff like that, it um, has that kind of go wide strategy. So, we're going to talk about kind of two different styles um, that you can play when you're rocking out the black white tokens. I know some people have tried like Mardu tokens and they've tried some different styles, uh, but this is kind of the classic tried and true version of it. Um, the list that I am going to be showing today do not have. Um, Fatal push in them, but the we'll talk about how that can easily be ported in if that's what you want to run. So, first things first, though, guys, let's showcase the, the list, shall we? Bam, we got it going. All right, so here's the list. This is kind of the first version that we're going to discuss. This is the one that is running creatures. So there's essentially two different versions that you can run. You can run the creature version, um, which runs our Oriac Champion, or you can run the non-creature version, which usually keeps the champions like in the board or something like that, because it's it's actually really smart to run the creatures um, in your 75. So let's start off with the creature itself. Uh, champions, a human cleric, costs double white for a 1-1, one, one, but quite relevant, does have protection from red and black. And whenever a, another creature comes into play, you gain a life. So this is not just your creatures, but your opponent's creatures. Um, so that does work out really nicely because you're generating a lot of creatures. So you're going to be able to gain a bunch of life and, and stay alive. So that works out really well. So you see three are in this list. It makes a lot of sense why you be, would be running it. Um, now, there is one other creature that you sometimes see from time to time. And that's our Hero of the Blade Hold. Um, Cost four mana for three four with battle cry, which is nice. Whenever he attacks, of course, um, gives all other attacking creatures plus one plus zero. Oh. And then when he attacks or she attacks, sorry, you also get to put two one one white uh, soldier creature tokens on the battlefield, tapped and attacking. You can stack those triggers so the um, soldiers will enter and then battle cr cry trigger will go off. Now most people are not running the hero anymore because we have enough four drops and so we don't really need to rely on hero of blade hold to to get there anymore before it, you know you would see lists because they didn't really care about gideon didn't really care about soren we needed some extra stuff in there um now really the planeswalkers is kind of the way to go so you won't really see very many but it's still a preference thing if you want to have like a one of a two of in there you you go for it you do you um, so that is kind of creature wise. We wanted to discuss that real quick Going past the creatures we have all of our planeswalkers So this list is running Liliana the Veil a little bit more control aspect to it making people discard cards You can have them sack creatures seems pretty good um, Soren Solemn Visitor is like a staple for black white tokens um the life gain aspect to it works out well. You can generate tokens off of minus two. So all of these are great. But really, the plus one is very relevant because it, it's until your next turn. So this plus one, plus O, and lifelink continues during your opponent's turn. So that could affect how they attack, things like that. Um, and with you losing life off of one of your creature generators, that lifelink is quite relevant. So you, that's why you see there's so many uh, Sorens in these black-white lists that are running around. But I like having the Lilies in there. I've tried out without Lilies. I've tried them with Lilies. I personally like having Lily in there. That extra control uh, is, is pretty nice. So I like that aspect. Now, there are some other Planeswalkers. Let's pull them up. Okay, here's the four big ones when you're going to be playing tokens. Right, we talked about Lily, talked about Soren. We've also got Elspeth, Knight Errant. I like it. I used to run a one of in my list. You know, I like having that aspect in there. 
Uh, cost four for for Elspeth there for four loyalty planeswalker plus one you get a one one white soldier sweet we're talking about generating tokens this works out great plus one give target creature plus three plus three and flying until the end of turn so you're essentially saying oh that one one soldier is now a four four flying and I can get over top of you right if the board's gummed up and we can't get through we have some evasion with Elspeth and then minus eight you know you're for the rest of the game artifacts creatures enchantments and lands that you control are indestructible that isn't really something that's going to happen quite often um really it's going to be that kind of plus three or make a token with, with elspeth but you know that's another preference thing um i think one is fine i don't think you should be running more than one for elspeth but that's again preference getting in on the other side there um is amazing I'm a big fan of Gideon uh, in the tokens list. Uh, another four cost, four loyalty planeswalker. Uh, plus one, of course, Gideon becomes that 5-5 five, five indestructible creature. And you can prevent all damage that would be dealt to him this turn. Minus zero there. So just zero it out. You get a 2-2 two, two white knight. So that's pretty sweet. 2-2 two, two creature. Um, or minus four, which would just alt it right at the beginning there. You get an emblem with creatures you control. Get plus one, plus one. So... If your strategy is to go wide, buffing up all your creatures works really well. So basically saying, here's four mana, all of my creatures for the rest of the game are going to be plus one, plus one. But really, you can kind of get away with saying, you know what, I can plus one him now that I have some tokens out. He'll be fine, he'll have five loyalty. Then next turn, I can be able to ult him, keep him alive. So it's, you know, I like getting in a lot for, for that aspect of it. So I wanted to show the different Planeswalkers, and we'll talk about them more when we're showcasing the next list. Um, talking about the lands, 24 lands, this is actually pretty solid. You could do some adjustments to the lands that you're running, uh, but the utility lands that we've got here, Vault of the Archangel, amazing for this deck. Um, creatures you control get Death Touch and Lifelink. So again, we were talking about how important that Lifelink is um, with the way the deck is set up. Very, very relevant. Uh, Death Touch is nice too, because if you're playing against something that might have bigger creatures, you know, being able to just kill them off with your 1-1s one or 2-2 two -two tokens, yes, works out great. Uh, also makes for combat math a little bit more difficult and blocking and stuff like that um, with your opponents and stuff and how they have to kind of sequence things there. Another lifelink man land we've got here is Shambling Vents. Um, this is our, our single land that we've got that will enter tapped. Um, essentially because the other one should be able to enter untapped unless you choose not to but this one has to enter tap but i like this in there um i've done some adjustments and not run a full play set um i i've kind of shaved down to like two or three personally because there are some relevant plays that you could do on turn one um so it can slow you down by having more shambling vents but it's a really good card right um, of course we got a marsh flats gonna be fetching here um Find a plains or a swamp works out great. Place at a godless shrine. Yep. Okay. There's our shock land. Sweet. Isolated chapel. I love it. Buddy up. Yeah. Works great. Caves of Kozilek. Again, that's preference. Like caves works out pretty nicely. Taps for a colorless, or you can lose a life and get a white or black to your mana pool. There's a place set in there. You could also go for like the filter land. You could also add some more isolated in there more basics you know you you decide add more fetch lands to windswept teeth things like that so uh two swamps three planes in there gotta have those basics right there's blood moons running around so there's kind of our land base now spells we break it down into kind of three categories right um token generators removal and disruption so let's talk disruption and that's kind of our turn one plays that we're going to do kind of works well with Liliana with that sort of disruption play. We've got play set of thought seeds in here. Okay. Remember what that does. Opponent reveals their hand. You can choose a non-land card from it and that gets discarded. You also have to lose two life. Okay. Play set and there's nice. Uh, we've also got three Inquisition of Consulate does the same thing as um, thought seeds except the non-land card has to be converted mana cost three or less. All right. Cool. Makes sense. Um, so with these two, this is kind of where you can do that adjustment, right? I think Thought Seas is the easiest one to say, I'm going to shrink down the number of Thought Seas that I have main board, and I'll put them and 
into my sideboard. And you could do that, and you could say, you know what, I'll, I'll run two Thought Seas so I can pour it in uh, two Fatal Push into my list. Makes sense. Cool. We can we can make that work, right? Um, so the next set we have is sort of removal, um, and the big one since we don't have fatal push in here is our playset of Path the Exile. Right? Path to Exile is is sweet. Everyone should know it. If you're playing modern, you exile a creature. Um, it can its controller can search his or her library for basic land card, and then they put that on the battlefield tapped. All right. Cool get rid of all those big dumb dudes kind of thing also um some people have been running dismembers some people have been running um ooh, malcolm's moving around sorry uh murderous cut things like that but really that's kind of the way to go um now we have our token generators well okay intangible virtue kind of is not really fits into those three categories but i kind of buddy it up with the token generators because it just kind of goes along with it so really you kind of want to hope for a inquisition or a thought sees turn one turn two intangible virtue turn three play your token generators unless you happen to have a bitter blossom then play bitter blossom turn two but let's start with bitter blossom right got unbanned years ago um pretty sweet sometimes you'll see some actual just straight up fairy list running it uh, beginning of your upkeep you lose one life that's you have to lose a life you cannot miss that um, put a one one black fairy rogue creature token with flying onto the battlefield right so that's um, way to constantly generate creatures during your turn and that's why that life link is so important with the Orak champion basically counteracts bitter blossom um, because every creature you gain a life well guess what got a token cool counteract that uh, Soren lifelink until uh, my next turn nice works out great we've also got timely reinforcement which works well with bitter blossom because you can gain life if you have less life than your opponent you'll gain six if you have less creatures than your opponent you get three one one white soldier tokens so i like having this main board i used to run a single main board and an extra in the board um because hey guess what you're going to lose a lot of life um especially with thought seas bitter blossoms things like that the next ones most common people think about lingering souls yes Right, this is what I want to be doing. I have pay three mana, get two one one white flying spirits, and then guess what? Later on, if the game's gone on long and grindy, I can just pay two, and now I've got more spirits. So, like that plan a lot. Spectral possessions, another great one. You have to pay three white though. Otherwise, the the card costs more. Uh, if you're not using white, it costs two mana, so you can have it be up to six mana, which is bleh. Nobody wants to do that. We'll pay three. Uh, but you get three spirits off of this one. So that's another sweet one to be able to run, right? Just kind of flood the board with spirits and just go over top of your, of your opponent. Um, next, we've got Secure the Waste. So this is a, a nice one to add in, especially if it's kind of those more grindy matchups. Say on your end step there, this is instant speed. Most of the other ones are sorcery speed. I can sit there and say, all right, I'll tap my four mana and just now I've got three soldiers or something like that. Or, or I'll tap six because it's gone long and grindy and we can be able to get a bunch of soldiers now. So I like having two in there. But you again, you can adjust the numbers for that. Sideboard can easily be tweaked and adjusted. Like, I like Pits and Needle. Ratchet Bomb's pretty sweet. Uh, Scholar's nice. Ghostly Prison, if you kind of want to be able to do that um, because it affects you. Creatures can't attack you unless they pay two for each creature. So if it's like an aggro deck, something like that, you know what? Let's slow them down a bit. Rest in peace, kind of anti-graveyard stuff, stony silence, we know, artifacts, cool. Worship, love it. You're going to have creatures. You shouldn't be able to die, right? Should help you out unless they have a bunch of board wipes and then you're, well, sorry. Uh, if you control a creature, damage that would reduce your life total to less than one reduces it to one instead. So that works out well to help keep you alive. Celestial Purge, anti-red, anti-black, just exile it. Could be creature, could be planeswalker, whatever. It's permanent. Just remember we were talking about more removal got two in the board there sundering growth anti-artifact anti-enchantment and then you get a populate so you get an extra token off of it and then another timely reinforcement so again you get the kind of idea of how you have to set up your spells 
Um, there is a lot of flexibility with numbers. Some people have started to shave down a little bit of the special possessions, maybe to add in more planeswalkers, different things like that. You know, champion's nice, but we're going to showcase a list that doesn't have the Orok Champion main board. So this one, and we're looking at the rest right now, is running the Gideon. Now it is running only one Gideon, and again, you can adjust your numbers accordingly, but five planeswalkers is nice. And you have to think when you're playing this deck, is four is my top end, right? That is how I need to go. But optimally, I need at least three mana to be able to get going and do the things that I need to do. Most of my um, token generators cost three mana. So I need to kind of keep that in mind um, going forward there. So, But four is the top end. We're fine with four. And you can see 24 lands works out pretty nice. We talked about having extra fetches in there. This is kind of where we've opted for. Arid Mesas, Bloodstained Myers. Okay, cool. Fetch for a white source. Fetch for a black source. Uh, Fetid Heath. We talked about the filter land. You can get double white, double black, white and a black. It's up to you. This also is running Ghost Quarters, which is nice to have that utility in there. But you have to be careful um, with running too many utility lands that do not tap for mana because some of your stuff like spectral possession are very mana intensive with the stuff that you need so uh, just be aware of that going forward if you're going to be building this list again play set of godless shrine for marsh flats this is what i like to see less shambling vents two shambling vents great um, opting for one vault this time because hey we need those uh, utility lands of ghost quarters maybe there's more tron in your meta seems fine the wind brisk heights is our hideaway land that you'll often see in tokens now when it enters the battlefield you get a look at the top four cards of your library exile one card face down put the rest in the bottom of your library this taps for a white so that helps us out now if you attack with three creatures or more so spectral possession you attack with all three of those guess what we're going to be able to activate this one white we get a cast whatever that is so if we hid our soren our lily our gideon underneath windbreast kite we can sit there and attack and be able to just activate and boom now we have a planeswalker for one mana so that i like that idea of having the windbreast i think just a singleton is fine do not run more than that because it is again a land that enters tapped so you have to keep that in mind going uh, into this route so I like this sort of idea. Now, uh, I also forgot to mention, I think, in the first list, Intangible Virtue not only gives our tokens plus one, plus one, but also gives them Vigilance, which is very uh, relevant when it comes to, hey, I want to be aggressive, I want to chip away at you, but I also need to have my guys on blocking duty to protect my Planeswalkers. So that lets you kind of pull double duty with that. So Intangible Virtue, great card. You guys should be playing it if you're playing tokens. Um, so, again, Disruption. Four Inquisitions, three Sotsies, a little bit less Sotsies, but again, you can even adjust it more. Um, I liked having four Bitter Blossoms, so I liked having less Sotsies. I think I did uh, four and two when I was running my list, because that two life is relevant, and you're going to lose a lot of life every turn for Bitter Blossom. Um, but you see two Timely in here, gain some life off of that, gain some creatures off that, works out well. Three Spectral, four Lingering Souls, always, always, always have four Lingering Souls, regardless of what version of Black White Tokens you're running. This is like number one, number one, number one. Need that. So, um, removal, we have a more removal this time around. Four Path, okay, yes, I'm running White, I need four Path, cool. Uh, running that Murderous Cut, running two Dismember. So, again, I like Murderer's Cut because you're filling your graveyard full of all this stuff that just becomes fuel for cut. Um, but Fatal Push can work out well. So you can easily just say, you know what? Murderer's Cut, don't need you anymore. Fatal Push, you'll be in here. Shave down on one more Thought Seize. Put another Fatal Push in there. Um, I like Dismembers a lot. Minus 5 is nice. Um, but you can say, hey, there's not as much stuff that I need to worry about with this. I'll keep one Dismember main board and add another fatal push and then you'll be up to three you could do things like that um we do see in the board though the champions are there which is nice relic is kind of extra graveyard hate cool now there is additional disruption with the duress i like it you know you want to kind of go that route you can go that route now zealous persecution 
sometimes get seen in mainboard. Um, it is a really good gotchu card, like because you could sit there and be like, "Oh, sweet, okay, um, I'm going to electrolyze. I'm going to lightning bolt. I'm going to do this thing to to kill off your guys or whatever. Um, I'll do anger of the gods or something like that and wipe your board and all of your, you know." three three tokens that you have because you've got intangible virtue and you have the Gideon emblem are all gonna die well guess what all of my creatures get plus one plus one and all of your creatures get minus one minus one this also messes up math for a lot of players too when they're like okay I don't have to block this turn because maybe I'll have one extra turn kind of thing if you're going all out and you can just sit there and blow somebody out with zealous persecution you also used to see more of these when there was like infect and other things running around more often because that minus one is a pretty nice um board wipe style of thing that you could be able to do um once they start getting up because it can kill their nobles it can kill their blighted agents things like that so i like having a singleton i think it's nice but again not as relevant now since a lot of things are really big but if you want to go sort of more of that surprise factor it, it's a nice way to go so um Here's kind of the basic idea behind the list, right? We get to we get to see what's going on. We know how the list is going to be working. Four mana is, is kind of our top end for it. Kind of more mid-rangey, grindy, and it does better grinding against mid-range decks too. Because like if we're sitting here and playing these singleton creatures and stuff like that and trying to disrupt you and trying to pick apart your stuff, your spells in this deck are more relevant later on because yours are going to be generating more creatures so if we got to this point and we're kind of stalemated out and we keep killing each other's stuff and nobody can land something well now i just made three creatures and because it's gone on long and grindy here's my intangible virtue here's my emblem right i'm set up nicely that my creatures that i've got now are three threes and they have vigilance and oh guess what i have a vault of archangel out so now they have lifelink too you know bitter blossom constantly generating creatures every single turn so it's a really fun uh deck to play um but again it does suffer from that aspect of it doesn't really have that pierce style it's all about going wide so if you're playing against something that has a lot of ways to deal with those go wide strategies whether it's like anger of the gods whether it's um, supreme verdict damnation things like that those board wipes you're going to have a, a hard time also a very quick aggressive deck might be able to get in there and get uh going very quick before you're ready for it um so you have to be careful something like uh boggles for instance right this build-a-bear style that has the ability to get trample for their creatures and even though it's just one creature and you can be like ah i've got chump blockers all day this will be great until they start trampling over you and then you're just sort of like well that was fun and all but now i just take you know seven damage off that one block so it's easier to be able to deal with that sort of stuff um you know when you're playing that mid-rangey style you can play against all right we're both sort of kind of going wide i can deal with this no problem um disruption doesn't matter as much if you're able to land something like bitter blossom um or just kind of wait it out keep your removal available that you can kind of get to that longer grindier games where this deck does uh benefit now uh control does kind of have a, a field day with this deck because it's like all right I can sit and wait because you can set yourself up nicely, but every time you try to generate a creature um, off of your spells, I'll just counter those, right? So that does cause some issues uh, if you're playing against control, and I know there is a little bit more control starting to, to pop up, and um, combo decks just kind of laugh at it because it's a little too slow. Um, so if you're playing against uh, scape ship and stuff like that, you're not going to have a good time. Uh, which there's a lot of scape shift running around so just be careful about what your meta looks like and when to really start playing this deck but it's again it's fun i loved it i loved playing the planeswalker version um you know i think five is great you could try to sneak in six but that's really pushing it based on the top end on how you want to go for this deck so um 
but yeah, that, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Modern Meta Breakdown. Um, you know, let me know if there's any other decks that you'd like to see. We're going to keep bouncing around. There's lots of other decks to talk about. You know, we're getting into spoiler season for Ixalan. Dinosaurs, yes. I'm so excited. More Merfolk. There's a sweet one that I'm going to be trying to port in, maybe uh, replace Kira with from the sideboard and stuff. So uh, lots of cool stuff coming. We're going to be doing another podcast coming up soon, uh, talking about the spoilers for Ixalan. So keep your guys' eyes peeled. Twitter uh, will be announcing when that will be taking place. Modern Magic Mondays is going to be returning for season six, I think. I think we're on six. Yeah, that sounds about right. Six, season six, um, coming in September. So keep your eyes peeled as well for that sort of stuff. Also, if you guys have been enjoying, we've been doing our Diablo uploads to YouTube at the beginning of the week on Mondays. We're going to start doing some StarCraft Remastered content coming up soon. Been having a blast with the game been doing lots of that also been playing a lot of PUBG, so maybe there'll be some PUBG stuff in the future you know just getting you guys up to date on what's going on so again beginning of the week it's all of our newer uh non-magic related stuff end of the week thursdays that sort of stuff is all of our magic related content uh with the exception of modern magic mondays that you guys can be able to check all that stuff down uh, in the description and stuff if you have not seen any of that yet but that's going to do it for this episode thanks again for tuning in guys and i'll see you guys next game